Hello and welcome back to our video series where today we will be covering major incident management. Now this lies within our incident module, which is obviously across our ITSM, but also our CSM licensing. First of all, today we wanted to go over a few characteristics of what a major incident is. Now, first of all, a major incident tends to have a critical business impact and can cause significant disruption. Because of this, there tends to be much shorter timescales to find a resolution to these major incidents. They tend to affect a much larger number of users. So you may have multiple incidents coming through one day all with the same issue affecting your users. Because of this, they have the highest impact and the highest urgency and require a very well coordinated and documented response. Your key stakeholders may also need to be aware and once the major incident process has completed, there will be a review that needs to take place once the service is restored. But of course, once again, these key characteristics are dependent on how your company wants to go about managing their own incident process separately. Now, today in our video, we're going to do a demonstration of the major incident management process, which will focus on these four key areas. So obviously, we need to start by identifying the existing incident and proposing it as a major incident candidate. The second key feature is the communication and collaboration throughout. So we need to make sure that IT teams, the business stakeholders, end users and customers are all informed about the impact and the progress of this particular incident. Third, we need to agree upon the path to resolution and make sure that this, this issue is resolved as quickly as possible. And lastly, we have the post incident review. Now the purpose here is to analyze the incident and understand what can be done to prevent a similar incident happening in the future. So let's see this in practice in the demo. Now we're in the service operations workspace, which we have outlined in a previous video, if you wanted to see a bit of a walkthrough of our workspace. But today we're impersonating Laxmi, who is our service desk agent. Now today Laxmi has been assigned a particular incident that is around an issue of the email. Now, if we click into the details, Laxmi can obviously see more information. She can see the impact and the urgency of this particular incident. But more importantly, on the right hand side, under our agent assist functionality, Laxmi is able to see that there are actually many other similar open incidents coming through regarding this issue with the email. Because of this, she's going to act fast and go ahead and propose a major incident. She simply clicks on the three dots at the top of the workspace, fills in the work notes, just to give our major incident manager a bit more context as to what is going on. After the work notes have been filled in, just simply putting the business impact as high and we will go ahead and propose this major incident for the major incident manager to look at. Now we'll take a look at this from the major incident manager's point of view. So starting off today, we're in the major incident overview dashboard. So first of all, in this overview tab, he can get a great view on any major incidents that are currently overdue, any that may be unassigned and the total number of open major incidents. Scrolling down, we can see incidents grouped by priority and you can stack these by different categories. So if you want to see this by assignment group, we can update all of this data in real time from this single dashboard and same for priority. We can also see any major incidents that are older than seven days and incidents by priority and state. But like all dashboards in ServiceNow, this is easily configured to what would be most useful for you to see. We can also see all active major incidents and also all resolved major incidents from this single dashboard as well. Today, we're going to take a look at the major incident candidates. And here we can see the major incident proposed by Laxmi just a second ago. So you can see our caller is Storm, the email service has been impacted and scrolling down here, we can see all the work notes and activities that have already happened on this. So Laxmi's proposed this as many users are infected and a critical service is down. 
And then at the bottom here, we can see the major incident state is currently proposed and it's been proposed by Laxmi as the business impact is high. Now we can also view all of this information in a workbench. And this workbench provides a single pane view for major incident managers, communication groups, and resolvers to manage incidents in a single location by aggregating all the relevant information to this major incident, all in this one single spot. So first of all, in this summary tab, we can see impacted services, affected CIs, and any child incidents all at the top. If we click onto this, it will immediately take us to view this in the list view. So we can also see all child incidents here. We can also create new and we can find similar in the system, which will search for this um, and it can give the support teams the ability to manage all of these child incidents in one go, saving them a lot of time from individually going through all of them. We can also add in incident tasks here. Inevitably giving us the best place to manage all related information all in this one single spot. Now that we've reviewed this information, we can either promote this to a major incident or reject it. And today we are going to promote it. Now, when you promote it to a major incident, you can see there's some updates to this workbench. There is now a duration timer that's appeared, which shows an active timer that tracks it from the creation of the original incident and the timer will stop once the incident has been resolved. We can also see the state here is new, but we have the ability to change and update this as we like. And lastly, within this summary tab, we also have visibility into all the communication tasks that are associated with this major incident. So we can see the ones that are currently active. So there's a planning meeting currently in progress, and we can also see the tasks that are completed. However, we do have a tab specifically just for communication, which is to help you understand the progress of a communication plan and its related tasks. So here we can see the communication tasks. We have a filter here at the top to see the active and completed one. And we can also come in here and add new tasks. So we can see which plan we want this to be associated with. We can add in a short description of what the task is going to be, which channel we want this to go out from, and also assign a template here and when we want this due. Next, we can define which recipients we want this to go to. So say I want to add a new group into this and we can go for architectures and we can assign them a responsibility as well. We simply save this and now our new task is here. We can also compose our email as we specified that as a channel from this specific workbench as well. So we can see all our um, recipients who've specified here, add in our subject and send out our email and just like that, we've managed it all from this workspace. Now this is really helpful when you might not have a well-defined existing communication plan in process as part of managing major incidents is having clearly defined and well-documented communication processes, making sure everyone's informed and we all know what's happening. Now at the side here, we can also see if there's any active groups that we can currently contact and we can also filter here for groups and see who we can contact straight away um, and if they're available or not. The last tab we can see here is the collaboration tab, which helps you view all of the information about your communication tasks that have conferences as part of their communication channel. So using Teams or Slack. This can allow you to manage participants that are part of this call, and you can also add in those conferences calls as well and specify the certain channel, whether this is a Teams chat or a Slack chat and when you want this to be due.
and just the same as as we've seen before you can specify which users you want this to go out to we can then see when this meeting is due and if it's overdue and we can initiate the calls from within this workbench as well which will take us directly into a teams window if the call is in process and an ITIL user who has access to this workbench sees this, they can also join the call from this specific workbench as well. And the conference leader always has the ability to mute, unmute, or kick an active participant by hovering the active participant and clicking to end the call. And like always, we can see the groups at the side that are on call and any active people so we can know who we can send an email to straight away. And once we believe we've had enough calls and we think we found the answer to resolve this major incident, we can go ahead and change the state from new into resolved. Then we add our resolution code. And in this case, the email server was affected. So we can say email server is now fixed and update this. Now, once this has been resolved, we can see our timer has stopped and there's one last tab here, which is the post incident report. And we can go ahead and click this as a full report. We can download this as a PDF if we want to share this around with our key stakeholders. And we can see all of the activity and information related to this specific major incident all from this one spot. So the time to identify the course, the time to initially respond, and the overall time it's taken to resolve this, the specific impacted service, if there were any outages associated with this, which locations were affected, how we resolved this, and any related records. So if there was a problem or a change request, that needed to happen in order to solve this. And then we have our activities stream showing the timeline of all the different things that have happened to potentially resolve this incident. So I hope this has given a good overview into major incident management. And as always, if there's anything else you'd like Alice and I to cover in the next video, feel free to let us know by filling out our survey and I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.